Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. Yeah, I'm not on camera for this video because quite frankly, we're just gonna be primarily looking through a ton of patents. And I'd like to quickly give credit to Zuby underscore tech on Twitter for um, adding me on this specific set of patents. They are extremely interesting to say the least. And also thanks to, well, a large number of you who were DMing me about this over the weekend and the last couple of days, I was actually away. But anyway, let's get into this, shall we? So the quick overview here of these patents is that they are for multi-GPU rendering. In fact, one of the titles is pretty brief. It's System and Method for Efficient Multi-GPU Rendering of Geometry by Geometry Analysis While Rendering. And we also have a second one. We'll quickly look at the name of this as well. System and Method for Efficient Multi-GPU Rendering of Geometry by Pretesting Against Screen Regions Using Configurable Shaders. And of course, the patent application for this is Sony Interactive. And perhaps unsurprisingly, one of the key inventors here is Mark E. Cerny. And I don't really think I need to, to introduce who they are. Now, as for these patents, there is something that I want you guys to know. A patent is a patent and a patent is not necessarily a product and or something which comes to the market. Also with patents, they tend to be filed in, well, the loosest way possible. So quite frequently when you see a patent, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's implemented exactly how it's written in the patent. And there are, of course, a number of reasons this is, not least of which they don't necessarily want to provide all of the information to competitors. And also they want to file it as loosely as possible so that well, it's just easier to, uh, well, stop someone from using your kind of technology. Um, but outside of the patent itself and how it's filed, um, I'm sure that there are going to be a number of websites which, well, will probably say something like this is for a PlayStation 5 Pro or a PS6. And indeed, this is possibly the case. We've already seen a series of patents or perhaps just one patent, I can't really remember right now, a while ago where it was actually mentioning multiple GPUs. And a number of websites were stating that it's almost certainly for like a PS5 Pro or whatever, as it looked like it was multiple GPUs that was kind of rendering. But I have to tell you guys, I'm very skeptical that that's actually what's going on here. In fact, if you look through the patents, I'm not going to even specifically mention a, a particular area, but I have to tell you guys, I don't think that that's actually what's going on here. If we go back to the first patent I mentioned uh, of an geometry analysis while rendering, I'm just going to call it patent one and two for our sanity. You can see that in the very first page, it mentions GPU A, B, C, as well as D. And if we just scroll down just a smidgen to the second page, well, right there, you can actually see mention of network. Now, honestly, this patent or series of patents is actually quite complicated. And I don't necessarily think that me going into it in depth is really something that you guys would want me to do in this video. I mean, I guess I could perhaps if I get requested to do it, but if we scroll down just a little bit more um, to sheet five of 19, yeah, it kind of goes on for a while. You can kind of see what's happening here. Basically, it's breaking down the geometry based upon what GPU is, well, kind of being assigned to a specific region of screen. Remember a moment ago, I mentioned GPU A, B, C, as well as D. Yep, well, you can see yourself that there are four boxes, and lo and behold, guess what they're labelled? That's right, cookie, cat, no, being serious for a second, A, B, C, and D. And you can see what's happening is basically, well, B is, I'm going to shock you guys, it's doing things in that region. So basically, they've divided up the screen, if you will, into a, well, they've quartered it, essentially. So uh, if you were to look at... Um, the various kind of polygons here in region a there is nothing going on but in uh, b and d they share um, they could be sharing work as well as c and d so essentially you can have regions of the screen kind of be rendered using multiple gpus and obviously it's very unlikely that any home system would have anywhere close to four gpus it would be well not really something that would happen. So almost certainly this is for the cloud.
Now I'm going to be honest with you guys, I don't exactly 100% know how Sony are um, running PlayStation Now in terms of their servers. Microsoft essentially, you know, kind of just summarizing it here with like uh, with their server blades for like Xbox with um, xCloud, they basically have Xbox hardware and they're currently in the process of rolling out. So they're changing from Xbox One hardware to Xbox Series hardware. So in essence, this allows you to have various different pieces of hardware all come together to render a scene and this is quite useful in a cloud environment basically distributing work based on well a ton of different factors for example let's say someone and this is just an example workload uh, based upon what we're seeing here but let's assume that each machine just to keep things really simple here Let's assume each cloud instance is as powerful as a PS5. Well, let's say that someone is playing a game which is not particularly taxing. I'll just pick on Limbo because it's my default for these type of experiences, but it really doesn't matter. It could be anything. It could be bloody columns. Well, it's not exactly utilizing the entire power of the PS5's GPU. In other words, it's really going to be doing very little. So if you were to just allocate that entire virtual machine towards that specific instance you're basically just wasting performance you're wasting hardware so what they can do with this method is basically have a specific gpu perhaps working on your instance but also something else however again i'm kind of just guessing here based upon these patents and i'm sure there's a lot of stuff that has not actually been published it is rather interesting though what sony are doing here however I don't believe that it is for a PS5 Pro or anything like that. It'll be very interesting to see what Sony does if there is a PS5 Pro, which quite frankly, I don't know. Um, it's like, if you look at the, the mileage they can get, and this is for Sony and Microsoft, but obviously they're, they're producing their consoles on the 7NM process. Uh, their APUs and they can get some mileage out of shifting to 5NM they can obviously get quite a lot of uh, additional die size they can also reduce power and all of the other stuff that we've discussed previously but yeah there are it's it's not a huge meaningful jump so Sony could do it if they most likely went with uh, that is a PS5 Pro if they perhaps wanted to go with a um, a larger die maybe but it would be very interesting to me if Sony end up doing a PS5 Pro or Microsoft release a more powerful version of the Series X. I do believe that there might be a greater likelihood for this generation that they just kind of skip it and go for PS6 or <laughs> who the hell knows what they're going to be calling the um, the next gen next generation Xbox. Of course, we've heard quite a lot about PS5 Slim, and I do think they're going to do this eventually. I heard that that's going to be 2022 at the earliest, possibly 2023, and that was going to be using the 5NM process. However, obviously things are so up in the air at the moment, and plans can change on a dime. Also, there's a story I missed a few days ago, which I find particularly of interest. It seems to back up what we've heard previously with plans for both Qualcomm as well as NVIDIA to use TSMC for both the 5 and 3NM process. Now, currently, NVIDIA are using Samsung, of course, on their 8NM process, but we've heard quite a number of interesting things regarding Samsung. The first is that their yields allegedly are not the best right now. Samsung have also increased their price, but perhaps most concerning of all, there are a lot of murmurs, a lot of rumors, that Samsung's more advanced processors aren't exactly ideal. And this, of course, is a really interesting thing because, well, currently there's a huge reliance on TSMC. In fact, even Intel are pledging to use uh, TSMC in the future. We've discussed this previously. Apple, naturally, are also a huge, huge, huge customer for... Um, for TSMC as well. So this means that not only do we now have Apple and AMD and Intel, but now Nvidia as well as Qualcomm are also going to be leveraging their process as well. And this apparently for Nvidia, according to a Digi Times report, I'll link it in the video description, is going to be starting in 2022. 
So there are a number of products that this could be. The most obvious one would be Lovelace, which is allegedly going to launch in Q4. However, another possibility would be the so-called refresh from NVIDIA. Now, I don't necessarily know if NVIDIA would release a... Um, an Ampere refresh on 5 and M. I'm quite skeptical of that. Although, of course, there are a ton of rumors that we will see an Ampere refresh, particularly for mobile. And obviously, the shift to 5 and M would make sense in terms of power consumption. It would certainly be a lot better than Samsung's 8 and M process. But yeah, I kind of expect uh, we won't see that. And it's going to be curious to see how capacity is handled here. Now, from what we understand, TSMC are very optimistic about long-term operations, and furthermore, they are also uh, increasing their capacity, which is obviously a really good thing. But at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's a very curious time in the market right now, and we are starting to see a really huge reliance on TSMC for production. This is a huge problem that honestly companies need to solve and Pat Gelsinger, who of course is the CEO now of uh, Intel, they recently were having an interview with Washington Post, I'll link it in the video description, and Intel themselves are actually negotiating at the moment to build a huge fab in the United States. This obviously has a lot of ramifications, not only politically, but also the fact that it would allow there to be a major third player in chip production. And of course, Intel, yes, they do produce CPUs and eventually uh, high performance GPUs and a ton of other things. But the thing about Intel is they do have their eyes on being a major fab as well for other companies. So naturally, Intel doing this would make a great move for the company. And yeah, I think, you know what, in 2025, 2026, I think tech is going to be really different in terms of just how we kind of see all of these companies, you know, divvy up their um, time between different fabs. And yeah, I mean, Intel certainly had a, a rough time of it. I, mean, I don't think I even need to mention to you guys things like 10 and M, but, Intel's roadmap for fabrication is quite ambitious, so it's whether or not they can follow through. The one good thing I'll say about Intel at the moment is that they've been nabbing a ton of talent, and I do think that Intel are on a pretty good path in the future. The thing is, even with Pat Gelsinger and a number of other key players now either rejoined or just joined Intel, and also, in my personal opinion anyway, I think a good change of attitude at Intel, and a positive one anyway, the fact is it does take a long time for a company to course correct, because obviously product roadmaps just take so damn long to come to fruition. With that said, guys, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, well, you know what to do. Take care of yourselves. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.